Hey guys, welcome back to this old Hewlett Packard 8568B Spectrum Analyzer. In case you missed the last installment, we had an exciting development. We got it to work finally. The secret was it needed a reference oscillator, 10 MHz reference signal. I knew there was a, an empty cavity inside where you can put an ovenized a high precision oscillator but I thought even in its absence there was some fallback oscillator in here but no I had to feed in an, ex an external signal that's that noise you hear in the background as I'm feeding it from an 80 uh, Hewlett Packard 8662A I have ordered up a used supposedly good oven controlled reference oscillator of the right type to mount on the shock mounts inside this when it arrives we'll go ahead and do that I'm also going to get a battery for this they still make that same type of non rechargeable lithium battery I didn't test this one yet but I suspect it's dead because it seems like every time I restart it it forgot what I was last doing now when all that arrives I do want to go through and put this thing through its paces However, I can't resist doing that now because somebody linked me to another one of Simon Spears' excellent videos where he does the internal calibration. I knew it had some internal tests that you could do, but the, I didn't realize it was this comprehensive and rather easy to do. So let's go ahead and try it. What you need to do, of course, turn it on. And... connect up the input to the reference output and do some magic presses on the key panel thank goodness it came up and it uh, does some pretty neat stuff so I thought we'd give it a try and yes I I buttoned it back up a bit and when you can finally see it right side up so <laughs> that's a nice thing all right so Simon had this really nice like laminated colorful diagram showing you how to do some of this stuff I took a, a screenshot and put it on my phone. Maybe that's in the service manual, which I also have on the way. I uh, hopefully be here in a few days. I figure in about two weeks I'll have everything: the oven, the battery, and, and all that. And then we'll really go through this thing. But I can't, like I said, I can't resist doing it right now. So calibration procedure with line power on plus instrument reset. Yep, sure. All right, can I cal output to signal input two? Ah, uh, yeah, that's what we got there. All right, press recall eight. Uh, and then it says equals and then a bunch of other buttons. Uh, I'm just gonna try recall eight. So first off, where's the recall button? Okay, there's recall eight. Yeah, that didn't do anything. Now you sit on some of these, you have to be careful because uh, some of the same buttons I think exist on both sections. Uh, let's see, I don't have any recall of there, so. There we go. Just gotta hit them simultaneously. All right, that's a good sign. All right, and it's supposed to have a center frequency of 20 megahertz, SP of 2 megahertz. I'm not sure what SP is. RB 1 megahertz. See what, uh, yeah, resolution bandwidth. Okay. And uh, RL minus 7 dBm and marker normal. So I think what you, he had is he pulled out a little screwdriver and he tweaked. There's an amplitude calibrator down here. Oh, I see. Adjust amplitude cal for marker amplitude of minus 10 dBm. Okay, we're at minus 11.8283. Oh, I see reference minus 7 dBm up top. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I see. So I'm adjusting the, the marker with the rotary knob to get it right on the peak there. And then I'm going to grab a little screwdriver and we're going to adjust that. Let's see if we can get minus 10. All right, here we go. Oh, the wrong way. It's pretty easy to do. It's a little touchy. I'm just going to quickly do this because I want to do it again. But, uh, minus 9.99. I'm going to get minus 10 exactly. Close enough. So here's the thing if you want to fully characterize this to meet factory specs, you need to have the ovenized crystal oscillator and let it run for something like 24 or more hours to fully stabilize. <laughs> so you can't just power it up and dive in like I'm doing it right now if you want to get absolute perfect calibration. But I'm just going through the steps here. So that's cool. I got the first step. Now I gotta go watch the rest of his video to see the next steps, which are kind of neat. All right, next up we have what looks to be a rather finicky adjustment. We want to do recall nine. Right, we get a very slow sweep across the bottom. We we're supposed to adjust the zero frequency up here for maximum amplitude as it's sweeping. It is barely turned and it just draws this crazy line. Make sure I got that right. Adjust, sorry, maximum response with frequency zero adjustment. Uh, so that's that. Alright, now here's the one that does some automated stuff. An internal automatic program measures and saves amplitude and frequency shift due to changing bandwidth, scales, IF gain, input attenuator settings. These errors are corrected on all readouts after routine is completed. I think these get saved to that static RAM, and if your battery is no good, it's going to lose them. If you turn the thing off and remove power, well, let's give it a try. So we've got a cow, so we want to do shift. Capital W, it takes about 90 seconds. So, okay, yeah, so that I see why Simon got confused when he did this. There's a lowercase w up on the top for trigger line, there's a capital W on the bottom of frequency. Uh, Span, so I think we want that bottom one. So, what was it? Uh, shift to W. Okay, so that displays, oh yeah, so shift lowercase w displays all the internal settings it has stored for that right now. And if you do shift capital X, it says to use the correction data, shift capital Y not to use the correction data, and shift capital W display that data. But why isn't shift W... Okay, there we go. There we go. Now it's now it's exercising all the uh, options there. So kick back and watch that for a little while. Oh, 
awesome is that? The only thing I really love about this is I do have a soft spot for vector displays. Something else we're going to have fun with is I'd have that 14 inch precision Hewlett Packard XY monitor that I'm going to hook up to this. It should look spectacular based on the handful of photos I've seen of one in action. The only downside is my 14 inch monitor is bare bones. I don't have the enclosure for it or the screen bezel. I just have the kind of the raw chassis and the knobs. Did a video a few months ago where I got it working. I got it back in the 80s at a swap meet for a, not a whole lot of money, maybe 25 bucks or something like that. And it's the only one I've ever seen in my life. So the odds of me finding an enclosure for it are pretty much null, nil, so I think I'll have to make my own. I'm hoping when this is done, it'll give some indication that it's done. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing right now. I got a comment, somebody asked me what the noise floor was in a, uh, an image I had shared or a portion of the last video. I don't know, but I assume he was referring to this stuff down here. Uh, partly because I hadn't calibrated it, and I don't even know the thing's fully fun working properly yet. But I'm also not really sure how to read everything on this device yet. I still have to read up what all these buttons do and what all it can do. I get the general gist of it, but I don't know what every... Like we have buttons on here, resolution bandwidth, video bandwidth. I don't know what those do. An auto A, B, C, D, E. I'm thinking those are settings you can store and retrieve, like the presets. I'm not sure. Okay, so you sweep time and attenuation. Those I haven't triggered. So every time we've been running this, I think the sweep has always been 20 milliseconds. I'm guessing you can make that go slower if you want. Maybe this is done running. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem to have changed in a while. Uh, but we also have attenuation, because that's something I've been wondering about, is how can you change the attenuation on the input? I think this is done. It would have been nice to see a message saying, calibration complete. Well, these values would disappear or something. I'm guessing they're going to stay up there until I... Oh, well now they're changing. Well, with Okay, those, those are probably the updated values now. I don't know how you make them go away. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I did shift V and now we've got... I think these are all the possible error messages you can get. And this all the, those are all the errors I currently have, which is 249 unlock, 275 unlock, oven cold. Well, I don't have a crystal of an uh, oscillator in there, so that doesn't mean anything. Uh, there's a bunch of YTO errors. Man, how do you clear I don't want to hit instrument reset because I don't want to wipe out what I just did. How do you make that stuff go away? Normal? No. <laughs> nuts, there's like three layers of text on the screen. <laughs> I hate to do it, but I'm going to hit the reset button. So I don't know 
know how else to make all that junk go away. And if I do Shift W, okay, it brought those values back up. But man, you would think hitting Shift W again would make them go off the screen. Why doesn't it do that? <laughs> Part of my daily job, by the way, is I'm a programmer and, and I help develop UI user interfaces. So that's why I like to uh, try using stuff without reading the manual first to see if they did a good job and I can figure it out without having to read the manual. But in this case, I don't quite get it. All right, so anyways, let's try that attenuator button. Okay, and right away it said uh, there's a, a light came on above that knob the rotary knob saying it's enabled so I hit attenuator enabled no it's rotated oh yeah and you can hear a click so right now RF attenuation 10 dB now it's 20 now 30 40 50 it's curious because the noise floor is just moving up I think I'm attenuating the signal more. Oh no, wait. I'm attenuating it less as the number goes up, right? I think. I think. So yes, RF attenuating 10 dB I think means it's attenuating more than RF attenuation 20 dB, maybe. I don't know. But it's doing a thing, it's clicking. But this is what I meant about, it's not quite the same as an oscilloscope. Like, I think all you can do is attenuate. Like, I don't think it amplifies. That's why you need that active probe if you want to look at a really small signal. And you want to match your impedances and all that. It's not as simple as using an oscilloscope usually is. Let's check out sweep time. So sweep time, 20 milliseconds. 30 milliseconds. 50, 75. You see this is sweeping slower and slower and slower. If you go the other way. Okay, 20 is the fastest. Alright. Let's uh, play around with this a little bit and pull it our center frequency at 20 megahertz. In the middle. And let's make our sweep width narrower. I'm curious. Video bandwidth, 1 megahertz, 3 megahertz, 30 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz. Is this like filtering the input? Makes a big difference. And frequencies, so let's do a start of like 18, oops, 18 megahertz, stop of 22 megahertz. That's not what I expected to see. Here it is a bit tighter going from 19 to 21. It's curious because now it looks like it's just slightly off to the left, but pretty damn close to 20 being dead center. That's, that's going to be it for now. We're going to have a lot more fun with this. Uh, I, I'm satisfied that it's doing what it's supposed to do. It seemed like it went through the calibration correctly. I think at this point I, I have too much guesswork. I need to read the manual and study on how to use this and experiment with it more. So we'll pick up on this when the oven arrives, when the manual arrives, when the replacement battery arrives. That's it for now, as always. Thanks for watching.